There is a distinction between the resistance, as I was saying before, and the Compagnon pour la Libération. Hubert Germain was the last of over a thousand. Who were these Compagnons pour la Libération? These were exemplary individuals uh, chosen to represent the array uh, of lives that were sacrificed for France in the Second World War, uh, people who gave everything but did so in many different ways and in many different places. There are only six women among them. And we could argue that the choices were somewhat arbitrary. But what we can see is that these were people uh, who did not value their own lives as much as they valued fighting against uh, the Nazis and their collaborators, who broke with their families, who lived in uh, the Maquis, who went, uh, as uh, Germain did himself, uh, to fight in Africa uh, and in Italy, who was severely wounded, uh, whose father fought, unfortunately, on the other side for, uh, for Pétain, whose family was, was destroyed by uh, this terrible occupation. These are people who are like us, just ordinary people in an extraordinary times and who do extraordinary things. And, and to honor the fact that they are citizens, uh, this 1,000 band fraternity uh, and sorority of Republicans uh, should remain permanently in the memory of this country. Uh, there's nothing quite like this in other countries because France was the only occupied country to formally collaborate as state to state with the Nazis. Uh, I had hoped perhaps that uh, Angela Merkel in her last uh, moments might, might join us because after all these people fought for Germans, for Russians, for everyone in Europe for freedom. Uh, the resistance is, is the moment when Europe was born. The Europe that we have today, as troubled as it is, came out of the resistance and mm -hmm. out of the resistance all over Europe. Uh, and these men and these women created the world in which we live, a world that's still worth defending. And we can now see Emmanuel Macron, who is deposing, putting down uh, this uh, wreath of flowers at the tomb of the unknown soldier. In just a moment, he's going to stoke the flame, which is another tradition on November 11th. Uh, Jay, we were talking about Hubert Germain being one of these compagnons pour la libération, 1,000 people. Yet the resistance movement was much bigger than that. The resistance took on so many different forms. Some of them were informal or formal. When a policeman would notify a creche or a school, uh, maybe you'd better not bring your, uh, your children here uh, tomorrow because there'll be a, a roundup of Jewish children. That person probably was not a member of the uh, companions of the liberation, but he, he was a resistance as well. Uh, when, when people um, uh, tore up uh, road signs, made it difficult for uh, German troops to move, they, they were resistance. There were many different ways in which, which resistance embodied hope, a belief that there is a future and it is not a Nazi future. So to talk about the resistance, also to talk about communists. Communists were very important in the resistance. The party no longer exists, it hardly exists, but they were fundamental in recognizing that this was a life and death struggle too. It was everybody, everyone from every class, from every part of the country. And of course, they were fighting against their brothers and sisters. The country was fractured. Half of the country was in favor of doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Maybe a third of the country was in favor of fighting against the resistance. This is something that we have to recognize. It was a civil war. Mm -hmm. And those who took up arms for the resistance were very brave men and women, had to leave their families, their children behind, uh, and risked everything. That, that is, in my view, the, the great story, it is the story of uh, hope that cannot be extinguished. And that's uh, what uh, President Macron was just saying a moment ago. Where would we be? Would we even be here today if those people had not fought? And I think for many young people, perhaps, uh, or those who aren't as familiar with French history, one thing that is very surprising, as you said, is that there was a collaborationist regime within France, the Vichy regime. Uh, just a word on that. Well, the, the people who supported uh, Philippe Pétain were ones who remembered that he was the great hero of Verdun, and he stopped the bloodletting in 1940 when the French army was, was basically defeated in the field with very substantial casualties. 100,000 men died in that, in that combat. And those who supported Pétain believed that too many men had died in the First World War. And yet it wasn't, it wasn't convincing to a whole range of individuals who believed that siding with the Nazis was the last thing in the world that anyone who fought in the First World War should do. Mm. Well, there was, the country was divided fundamentally, uh, and it's a divide that has left wounds that are still there, that have not healed yet. Armistice Day, Remembrance Day, 
originally started to mark World War I, we were saying earlier, and now it is commemorating all those who've fallen for France. Obviously, this day is celebrated in other countries as well. How do the celebrations in places like America or, or the UK compare to what we're seeing in France today? In, in Britain, the, the celebration was moved in 1939 to Remembrance Sunday, not the 11th. The 11th is not an official holiday, it's the Sunday. And that gave it a, a kind of clerical or sacralized notion within the calendar. I think uh, there, are there are those in Britain who want to put it back on the 11th of November in the midst of life, which is its great strength here, where everyone recognizes the 11th hour of the 11th day is a, is a, is a moment. But in Britain, it's done on the, on the Sunday. And I think it lowered, in some ways, the, uh, the palpable sense of something in the midst of life. In the United States, it's less uh, significant, uh, I think, because there were many, many fewer casualties in the First World War uh, than in Britain or in France. The United States took a bloody nose in the First World War. It wasn't this evisceration that took place in Europe. Jay, I'm just going to jump in so we can take a moment to listen to the Marseillaise. Reposez! Um, 